the bee. The wasp, sorry, not a bee. Um, okay, he's checking me out. Let's continue with our discussion on how to steady. Okay, we've already talked about uh, the first couple of tips that I can give you. The first one being uh, for you to really sit down and ask yourself why it is you're studying whatever it is that you're studying, right? Really ask yourself uh, sincerely that question. Uh, because if you're, if you're studying it just to pass, then just do that amount of work to pass that course, right, to get the credit. If you're studying it because it's something you love, if you're studying it because it's, um, it's going to be something you're gonna be building on, then end up putting a lot of work into it, right? So it's, 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 it's a pretty important question before you get into any type of work that you do. Why is it that you're doing this thing? That sort of dictates how much effort you're gonna put into it, right? And that sort of kicked us off into tip number two, which is basically trying to improve your efficiency, right? Uh, and one of the best ways to improve your efficiency is to sit down and study for long periods. Right, and we talked about that, and we I did a little bit of mathematics and uh, sort of just numbers wise ratios. Uh, took a look at what that meant to improve your efficiency, which is basically uh, reduces the amount of time you have to spend on learning something, right? And now, those were um, tip number one and tip number two. As for the third bit of advice that I can give you regarding on how to study, is for you to find spaces that you want to be in right basically to find your happy spaces right and it doesn't have to be one place where you go to to study right because uh, what they used to tell me when I when I was studying when I was growing up in high school basically is you know they used to tell me is to create one space you know usually your desk clear it off make sure it's clear and you you know you go to that space always to learn something to study something right and that worked fine for certain courses I used to do where I had to sit down with a pen and paper and I had to crunch numbers and I had to be sitting upright or whatever it was right for studying something that um, required the desk it worked fine for studying something that didn't require a desk it really sucked because it wasn't comfortable and I really didn't have to be there right and it took me some time to figure out that you know I didn't have to read a textbook or a book or uh, you know I didn't have to take uh, take notes, copy notes, or sort of go over my notes over a desk. I could go lay down on my bed. I could go to the beach. I could go to the park, right? I could take my notes, read them, walk, think about them, and then open up my book, sit down on a bench or on the grass, and, you know, read the notes again, right? And think about them, walk. Right? If you're trying to, uh, you know, learn something, sometimes you need pauses between concepts, right? To connect the dots, to catch up with the idea, right? So you don't have to be sitting on your desk for that. So really important, if you're, if you're trying to, you know, improve uh, your, your ability to absorb information, then don't study something that you don't like or something that you like in a space that you don't like change your setting change your mood right that'll improve uh, your abilities to retain the information that'll improve the odds of spending longer periods at it right and I've tried this with students and I've had you know I, I had a student in grade 11 where uh, we did some serious catch-up uh, to learn the material to a certain point and um, this one location we got to it was basically completing the square graphing parabolas right and uh, you know if you've if you've done that work you know that it requires a fair bit of crunching to learn to for it to become intuitive right for it to become automatic for you because that's what you need need that process to be when you walk into a test uh, so you know we had reached that point that she was going on vacation and I asked her what she did on her vacations and you know she told me that um, you know, she likes going to the beach and she likes going swimming at the pool and I asked her what she did when she went to the beach or the pool and she said you know she would sometimes grab a book and read a book or or just relax or listen to music and I recommended that she actually took her math to um, to vacation with her to start doing some factoring and to start doing completing the square to learn those processes really well right 
And um, after, t you know, it took some convincing to take math to, to vacation with you, but she did take it. And after two weeks, she came back to me and she had learned everything we needed to learn. And the next step uh, following the vacation was ridiculously easy. And then after that, she just coasted Math 11, right? And she turned to me uh, a few weeks later and she, she, she said, um, and she said to me, uh, I've, uh, I've stopped doing math every day and I miss it, right? And that was something magnificent something magical to hear from someone that hated doing mathematics earlier in the year, at the beginning of the year, right? So in two weeks, in one week of vacation and one week of being home, she had come to a point where it had become automatic for her to do mathematics and something, you know, she was doing something that initially she didn't like doing in a space that she loved being at. And all of a sudden she associated the mathematics with being somewhere that she loved to be, right? So she was missing not being able to do math. And it was beautiful and it was, and it was awesome to see. And it really kicked her up to a level where the rest of Math 11 became ridiculously easy. And uh, she was able to finish the course with really good marks by putting in minimal effort just because she had put in that time uh, in a space that she really liked doing to learn a process. Okay, so tip number three Find your happy spaces to be in right find your happy zones Put yourself in a mood where you're open to the information coming in. Okay, as for tip number four okay. It's a biggie it's to come up with a schedule and to create a to-do list Okay, and we'll talk about that so what, I don't see, sync, what's, what's symmetrical here? Well, if you look at the frame I have set up, I've broken it up into two parts. Here, take a look. No, that's okay. Oh, you you're see recording that? yourself. So, yeah, 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 I'm recording myself. Nice. And I'm s sitting in the middle, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And what I'm talking about right now is... Mm -hmm. Is, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Oh, no, no, that's okay. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's twofold, right? It's sort of, uh, I'm talking yeah, about, yeah. Oh, oh, hold on, let me move this stuff out of your way. Yeah, yeah, here. Do you mind being on video? Yeah, not at all. No, okay, here. So cool. I'm, I'm sitting in the middle here, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, are you okay with me loading this on YouTube if, sure. I, if it looks good? Okay, yeah. okay fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so basically what I try to do when I'm, when I'm making my math videos, I, I've created like maybe, I don't know, 200 plus. Oh yeah. Right? So I'm building my own curriculum because I think school system sucks. Good. I think yeah, a lot okay. of, one of the reasons there's a lot Fair of enough. people, a lot, one of the reasons that you're not out of work mm -hmm. is because the school system sucks, mm -hmm. or education system sucks, right? And one thing they don't show when they're teaching mathematics is, Mathematics is beautiful. It's in nature. It's in yeah. It's it's beautiful. I do. Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent, right? It's beautiful. It's in nature. It's embedded everywhere within the natural world and embedded everywhere within our structures. The yeah. way we structure our life, may it be finance, may it I be. I don't know too much about it, but they're talking about the, like a golden ratio. Uh, uh, there's golden yeah, ratio. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I've done. A, I did a video on the oh, cool. Fibonacci sequence yeah. and the golden ratio. You know, I have a friend yeah. that's an artist and he so embeds. So 1.618 uh, yeah, it like depends that? if you yeah. divide it this way or divide it the other right. way, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, you know, I did a video with uh, a friend of mine that's an artist that was in, embedding the Fibonacci, you know, Fibonacci sequence mm -hmm. or the golden ratio in his artwork, right? So when I shoot my videos, when I try to make my videos, I try to sort of put symmetry or beautiful imagery in the background because cool. I like art, right? It yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be symmetrical, it could be chaotic as well, yeah. right? Do you know anything about um, like smell? Or taste yeah, is closely yeah, yeah, associated yeah, 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 with yeah. memory. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Right. I do a lot of memorization, uh, lyrics, poetry, uh, sequences of uh, guitar chords, um, and what's worked. For, and it may, it may not be the most efficient way, but it's just repetition of a huge amount of repetition. And for music. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, when I'm like just, the background, the, just the, yeah, the basic. Yeah, yeah. I used of, to I used to play drums, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, playing drums is just a beat, right? One of the yeah. you know, uh, the, the best drummers in the world aren't 
the drummers that can do fantastic stuff, the mm -hmm. best drummers in the world are the ones that can keep it consistent. Consistent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, but when I'm doing a, say I'm gonna sing a song with three verses, I will um, sit there and play the first verse. Okay, and then I'll play it, play it, play it, then I'll start playing it without looking at it okay. until I can memorize it. And then, okay, I got it memorized, the first verse. Then I'll add the second one in, okay? I'll sing the first verse without looking, and then I'll look at the second verse, sing it. And then keep doing that until I can... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep yeah, doing yeah, that yeah. until I can do both without looking at it. Yeah, yeah. And, and then yeah. add, and then you want to keep that so they're both perfect before you move on, and then get the third one. Yeah. And then you can go on fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, yeah, eighth, yeah. and it's just, you're just piling on your memory. But the nice thing about music is there's going to be the same structure. Basically, when you're singing a verse, it, it is symmetrical. In, um, in the sense, one verse to the other is generally going to have the same melody. Yeah, they have to be synced to yeah, a certain degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's been that's been my method for uh, effectively, and I, I pile in a lot of lyrics. Like sometimes, you know, seven seven verses, eight verses. There's one song I was looking at was sixteen verses. Oh wow! It was Lily Rosemary and the Jack of Hearts. Is that something you wrote or by something? By Bob Dylan. Yeah. Oh, by Bob Dylan. And so he has a lot of. I sing a lot of. Bob Dylan music. So he layers it. He has. He he'll write pages and pages of lyrics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowlands, Desolation Row, uh, Lily Rosemary and the Jack Hearts. Those are just a few examples of 11, 12, 16 verses of of music. Of and lyrics. he layers that stuff on the same song. Yeah. Oh really? Really? Yeah. yeah.